Okay. Um, let's look at uh, chapter 13, verse 10. We, we stopped with verse 9. He says, uh, Paul prays, you know, and he says, you know, this is, this also we pray that you may be made complete, that you may be thoroughly equipped, that you uh, come to that place of maturity. Um, so he says, this is, this is something that uh, we'd like to, uh, we, we pray for you. And the second part, um, uh, sorry, when we go into verse 10, it says, therefore I write these things being absent, lest present I should use sharpness according to the authority which the Lord has given me for edification and not for destruction. Uh, let me just share the, the screen. Okay. Okay, so, so verse 10, so he says, therefore I... I write these things being present, being absent, sorry. Um, so so he says, therefore, I write these things. Why? Um, that you may come to that place of uh, completeness, being thoroughly equipped and being perfectly trained and being mature. Therefore, um, we, you know, we write these things. Um, being absent, I'm writing it to you. Lest, you know, if I'm present, I might use sharpness. You know, sharpness meaning sharpness of words to communicate this because uh, because of the way things are with you all right so uh, lest I should use sharpness according to the authority which the Lord has given me so he's saying according to the authority uh, just lest I should use sharpness but this authority the Lord has given me for edification for building up and not for destruction. You know, something that Paul talks over and over again, um, which the other uh, or the false apostles, um, you know, uh, are actually exploiting the people, you know, and with the so-called authority that they have, they are actually exploiting the lives of people. But here Paul says, you know, I've been given authority, and this authority comes from the Lord. Uh, which the Lord has given me, and he has given me with the purpose, and that purpose is for edification, right? to build up the lives and not for destruction. So that's something that we need to understand, that uh, the Lord gives us authority, the Lord gives us, uh, you know, in, in for ministry, and, uh, and, uh, and the thing is that that authority is for, edification it, it is always to build up people's lives right um, so he repeats that again here uh, verses 11 to 14 finally brethren farewell become complete be of good comfort be of one mind live in peace and the god of love and peace will be with you greet one another with a holy kiss all the saints greet you the grace of the lord jesus christ and the love of god and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Right? So uh, in closing, he gives these uh, you know, certain uh, closing greetings and some final instructions. So he says, be of good comfort, become complete. Again, the same thing, you know, become complete, be equipped, come to that place of uh, maturity. Uh, in, in other words, he's saying the word used there is uh, Katarit, so or be perfect, um, which means to to complete thoroughly, right? To to come to that place, to be thoroughly equipped, to completely repair something. So he's saying, you know, be complete in in all aspects. Be complete. Uh, be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. So, again, reminding uh, of uh, of earlier things. Of early instructions, he's just reminding them. He said, "Be of one mind, right?" Uh, because that was the problem in the in the Corinthian church that they were all, you know, there was a lot of division and, and so on. So, saying, "Be of one mind and uh, live in peace," and the God of love and peace will be with you. 
right? Saying that let, let the atmosphere around you, let your relationships with each other be one of peace and uh, let it be of love and peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you, right? Greet one another with a holy kiss. Now, that was something cultural, the way manner in which they, they greeted uh, during those times, greeted each other during those times. So, um, so uh, it was a greeting, uh, a loving greeting in that culture. So he says, it, it reminds them of that, and also uh, tells them, you know, conveys the greetings or conveys the love and wishes of all the other believers. So he says, all the saints greet you, and finally uh, pronounces and blesses them saying the great of the grace of the lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit communion of the holy spirit be with you all amen yes, so we see uh, um, as we come to the end of this uh, you know these are some of the closing thoughts of paul right and uh, the reiteration again is that hey, there is need for uh, maturity. There is need. Uh, I see that need in your lives to be thoroughly equipped. So become that. Be that. Right. Um, so this in these. Um, so this, uh, in Second Corinthians, we see that it's a very, very different uh, epistle. Of course, there is the teaching, there is the uh, uh, revelation, and everything that Paul shares. But also, uh, we get an insight into the reality of uh, the ministry uh, that Paul did of those times. The reality meaning the, some of the hardships, some of the persecutions, uh, and uh, and all that um, is what he mentions. He lists down and the extent to which the trouble that he took in order uh, to share the gospel for the sake of uh, the ministry. So all that, you know, he, he shares and uh, and also um, yeah some some things that we don't see in the other epistle is uh, you know he's talking about his spiritual experience, what he experienced in the third heavens, what he heard, and so on. So he he experiences he, he shares about that also, right? So so we, with that we come to the end of this. Any um, any doubts or any questions, you can feel free to ask um, from anywhere. You know you can probably go through. Um, and see if there are anything that you want to uh, talk about, you want me to explain, that we should explain it again, uh, anything at all. Um, we can look at that now. Yeah, um, it's it's quite a insightful episode in the sense he gives uh, uh, also some information, some insight into the kind of uh, uh, the kind of false ministry that was happening during that time as well. You know, the false apostles, um, the kind of uh, um, the kind of deceitful work or deceitful ministry that was happening. Uh, around that, around those, uh, around that time, so he, we get a, a kind of insight into that as as Paul shares that, right? Um, yeah. Okay, so with that, we come to an end of uh, uh, First and Second Corinthians. Um, we will have some uh, some tests, which will be. Uh, you know, which will be uploaded. Um, the, I think we've done so far only one test. No? There are there will be uh, three more tests uh, before the end of the month. So today is twelfth. So before the end of the month, or, or by before twenty sixth, um, there will be three more tests, open book tests, uh, which you will have to uh, respond. So uh, whenever something is put on the stream, you will get uh, you will get a prompt, right? Whenever we put the link, you'll get a prompt. So, um, so I'll put it on the stream, and whenever the stream is, uh, our things are uploaded, the test is uploaded, you will get a prompt, uh, probably through email. Uh, so just be uh, 
alert to that, aware of that. And maybe you can put it on the students group also to say, hey, the test is, uh, uh, you know, the, the quiz is uploaded. So please answer that. And uh, you can go ahead and answer that. So, so for these three tests, um, you can uh, take time uh, from the time it is uploaded till uh, till the 26th of November. Uh, is that what is it? Let me just double check. Yeah, till that Friday. That is, uh, uh, we have one more Friday in between. Uh, 19th of Friday and 26th. So till the closing hours of that Friday, uh, you can take time and uh, and answer the test. Right? Okay, so with that, we, we come to an end uh, of um, this course. So why don't we just pray and then we'll close, right? We'll pray and close. Let's, uh, let's pray. Father, we, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for these epistles that we were able to study and we thank you for the, the depth of revelation that is there, the truth that is there, Lord, in um, each of these epistles, Lord. Um, we thank you for the instructions. We thank you for the exhortations, Lord. We thank you for the revelations, Father God. And as we have learned, as we have studied, O oh God, as we have gained these insights, Lord, I pray that we will never, Lord, lose sight of these, Lord, that Holy Spirit, we ask that you would write these words upon our hearts um, and it will be ingrained in our hearts, Lord, so that we might be uh, careful to carry them out, Lord, that we'll be diligent to carry them out and uh, not just be, Lord, uh, hearers of your word, Lord. So we ask that you would um, enable us to do this. Um, and I just commit each, each and every person Lord, every student into your mighty hand. I pray that you lead them, Lord, from a place of strength that they are right now to another place of strength, God, from glory to glory. And Lord, we thank you that, uh, Lord, each one of them, Lord, uh, that you will lead them on the uh, on the path of restoration. You will lead them on the path of, uh, Lord, maturity and equipping and training. Lord, I pray that you'll take them, Lord, uh, to that place of being thoroughly equipped and thoroughly trained in you, God. Uh, we thank you uh, for the time spent in your word. We thank you, Lord, for leading us. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you, guys. So we'll stop here and uh, God bless you. We'll meet for our life skills course. Uh, which will be on Thursday. Yeah. So next Thursday we'll meet again. God bless. Bye bye. Take care.